So, so the backstory of this podcast then was a, the, it was a twelve week year, and we did our uh, our sync meetings of making sure we stayed on our goals, and then we became on diverging to like hours on end talks, even though we're scheduled for a thirty minute check in for like uh, accountability buddy, and yeah, now it's here. So that quick backstory of how this happened was that weekly meeting. But yeah, dude, with that with that mind shift change did make me feel like I, I'm on it. Like I was thinking telling you 2022 was like very a uh, complacent year. I probably out of my goals. I only feel like achieved one. And for me, it was like I got I gotta do a change. I gotta get something done. And just having that weekly meeting, like yes, I concise the goals. So twelve week we twelve week year is pretty much concising what we want to do in one year to twelve weeks. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest piece on making sure I got those was because of these meetings. So, yes. Yeah, it's an accountability partner, right? Yeah. Like, you did way better in your 12-week year than I did. And, dude, it sucked coming to those meetings <laughs> and being like... <sighs> but, it, but because we have it weekly, it also gives me a week to kind of, like, redeem myself. Mm -hmm. I think what ends up happening if you meet with, like, other friends on, like, a quarterly basis is... You do nothing for three months. You sync up. You realize you like didn't meet exactly. what you wanted to try to do. Yeah. And then you're like, I'll talk to you in like three more months when I decide to still not do anything. Now you like blew an entire half year, right? That's six months that you just like blew versus like if we're meeting up every single week and I didn't move the needle, like every week I'm feeling that like eek, J.O. killed it this 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 past week. I didn't do nothing. And then it happens again and it happens again. Right. And yeah, I think also there's a social pressure too. It's like, if I'm not delivering and he's delivering every time, like, do I have the worth to still be meeting with him? Right. Like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's just another piece on there. It's just like, I got to deliver my half or else. I mean, I think this is what it ultimately comes down to. I, for the most part, only take the advice of individuals that like walk the walk. Right. And so if I'm not coming to those meetings, doing what I said I'm going to do, I'm a hypocrite. And in the same way that like we're providing advice to each other, things like that, like if I'm not walking the walk, my advice should mean basically nothing. Like if I was sitting in your shoes and, and so like, yeah. why would I ever be in that situation like that? Like with you, like that's, that's horrible. It's terrible. I would have cut me out of your social circle. <laughs> yeah. Better. And there goes ebb and flow. Like, again, if you need those words, you're just kind of complacent. Like, for me, like, this week, I'm hitting two of my three goals. And we could just talk about, like, hey, how can we fix that? Or we've got to cut something off. Do you have too much to optimize these other two? So, yeah, like, and we we asked those challenging questions. Like, what would we have to get different that you probably haven't sparked? So it's like, okay, hey, what time frame wise do you need to cut something out to focus on one so it could be the greater good? Mm -hmm. for the long run or can you keep sustaining or what do you got to get changed so it's like but yeah walking the walk is for sure an important thing because like if you don't it's like one of those things you're going to listen to a guy who has you guys hear you guys listen to a person who's talking about how to make a million dollars when they don't have a million dollars it's yeah like, really like you gonna tell me how to live like or like talking about oh you should how this is how you should run your business when you never ran a business i'm like okay i'm not gonna you can say it but i'm not gonna listen to it it might be valid advice but is it i'm good <laughs> respectfully no absolutely there was so i was talking to um someone that was like trying to re-enter the workforce and i was like okay maybe like i mean you have like 40 years of experience like this is this was a little bit you know like a senior and i was like okay you can like maybe do like some coaching of some sort i was like what what are you good at and they're like well i just want to help younger individuals kind of like not make mistakes in life so that they can be successful. And I was like, what, what, what does that mean? And they're like, well, there's like things I wouldn't do or things that I would do. Like, like maybe I should go to college or maybe I should um, focus financially on like certain things or save more or things like that. And I was like, why would somebody want your advice for that? I was like, did like, would you say that you've achieved a lot? And they're like, well, like there's a lot of things that like I would have done differently. And I was like, okay. I was like, now think of yourself in the market. There's two individuals, you or someone that 
has, I don't know, built a million dollar company. The advice and blueprints are going to be very different from both individuals. One is going to be hypothetical and the other one is going to be very tactical around like, look, I made this mistake getting to this part. That's something like I can actually validate does not actually matter. Right. And it's like, it's like someone that wants to start a business versus someone that has at least tried to start a business is still a big difference in the advice that they're going to give versus like, obviously if someone's successful with the business, that's the next level. But I think those are even different skill sets, right? Like I've started a number of LLCs. If you ever ask me, I'm like, look, don't spend $500 on rocket lawyer. You could do it for $75 in four steps. Yeah, right. It's done. Like, yeah, I said, have I started I got a, from you? <laughs> have I started a multi-million dollar business, but I've like started a business and I know the ins and outs where that is going to be different advice than someone's like, well, you know, maybe if I start a business, you should like start an LLC with like, you know, the state of California. And you're like, thank you. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Right. Like, even like, like then even, is it worth it starting a business if you're not already kind of bringing in the revenue to pay off like this, that end of the year fees you know what i mean it's like can you even can you even make up that like is it even worth it if you're just doing like a little by little but if you're if you're breaking even then is it even worth it then you can give that advice as well because you know already you created it you know no but jo all you have to do is just listen to tiktokers and write off your g-wagon because it weighs a lot and like just make an llc and you too it's can fine. have a g-wagon yeah, yeah because you write it off it's free no you didn't know that you know no i did not know it, that. it's totally free like you, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore you're you're good that that's the key to everything is just write it off and it's like the money disappeared yeah that those ones tick me off sometimes because it just tells <laughs> like write it off but like the process of creating one like for me when i made it, it took three months to actually get the number and then you have to do the it like the tin number to get the irs and then you have to make sure like your books are good and even keeping up with your books is like, all right, your mileage and these small little things. Like I know, so one of my colleague who, one of the colleague coaches like has a business, but doesn't know how to write things off or how to like keep the books. And like, yes, we could tell this stuff. They could hear it and tell it, but where's the how, where's the why? Like, this is how you do it and this is why you do it. So like for us, like when we came over, like, what was it? I did write off our dinner because we were tactically talking about business strategy. Mm -hmm. we were talking about business development and how can I, how can we market better? How can you create kind of this as a joint kind of branding type of thing, you know? And then you're like, holy crap. Then it, it, it valid. Not just say write it off. Cause I'm going to have a dinner. Like, no, like there has to be substance to it. Also, we have a professional CPA that does this stuff yes. for us, right? Like, right. it's not us just making it up and making assumptions. <laughs> like, there's a professional that we work like, with. Hey, right? Is this a valid thing? Yes. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we aren't right. using TurboTax's free filing no. for this stuff. We like, pay for people that do this. But <laughs> the, the return on that is way greater than what you're saving. Well, first of all, doing TurboTax by, your like, by yourself there's a time investment, then there's the potential lack of knowledge of what you're actually doing. So there's like a higher chance of messing up. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Versus I'm what? Good. Spend a couple of hundred sure. bucks and like they'll handle everything, make sure everything is good to go. And they'll like ask you questions back like, hey, did you do X, Y, Z? Do you have that receipt? Okay, cool. And I'm like, yeah. All right. Th this is why I pay and contact and yeah. do everything we got to do with you. There's like, did you keep track of your miles? Cause we can do like a portion of that. I'm like, Oh snap. No, I didn't. Let me backtrack on all these events that I did. So I create that. Oh dude. So like, yeah. And one day we'll get to a level where we have bookkeepers that manage all of our receipts for us. And then they work with the CPA so that we don't have to do any of that. But until we get to that point, like just, we take a picture yeah. of our receipts. We file it into a Google Drive, and that's about it, right? Dude, it's so like yeah. That even portion in itself was like just seeing those like videos. Just just like yes, you're saying like this is what you can do with it, but what's you gotta make it makes sure you have something with substance. <laughs> then don't Absolutely. freaking just create LSC and just say I'm gonna write it off, and then you freaking you know I just it was a weird thing that 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 one irks me. Yeah, people are looking for the shortcut versus mm -hmm. like, I mean, you said it yourself, the first year was rough and made you question whether or not it was worth it, 
right? Oh yeah, I thought I was not making anything. I thought I was like, I'm just gonna spend money, stuff like that, and I got my tax return. I'm like, oh, this is how I could actually, this is how it can actually work. And I saw it, you know, like oh, I get everything on the back end. Like yes, I'll spend now, get it written back. I just didn't know how it worked. Work like I didn't see it until you see it. You're like oh snap, and this that kind of propelled me to start my housing fund. Like I could start saving up for a house. It's like oh crap. Like I actually made more coming back into my tax return versus like not, and like I actually saw it versus just like, is it worth it? Like can I just can I just do this under the table and just collect this and just put it elsewhere? But it didn't. It actually helped, which was insane. It's just like going to the gym. We can't go to the gym one day and next day, you know, you're like, boom, G wagon. Like, no, I am a Jeep. Just so uh, for reference, I call Nick a Jeep and his girlfriend is, she definitely settled for this guy. So uh, he's the G wagon in this situation. So <laughs> when I call this guy a Jeep, it's because of that. So yes. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's It's all good. No, she definitely settled, bro. I'm going to put that I'm gonna put that on record. <laughs> Yikes. Well, I think on that note, let's end this. <laughs> that's, it, that's it for the first podcast. Thanks for, th- thanks for being the homie and throwing me under the bus in front of these probably 10 viewers that might be watching or listening in. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And if you made it this far, feel free to subscribe, like, comment on whatever <laughs> platform you are listening to this on, whether it's YouTube or uh spotify or or podcast (laughs) whatever it is but yeah this this is gonna be the first of many for sure